the the Hollow Earth edition 2015 of the Nord News Show. Welcome to the English translation. Uh, we hope to get you the content. It will be specific on some German issues, but we'll do our best. Give us feedback, our hashtag C3T. Yes, welcome to the fourth News Show 2015. We would like to begin with a small word of thanks to the technologists in the house uh, who have made it possible for us to go on so late. Small applause, please, for the technology staff in the house. And because we always say we shouldn't be as negative so negative. Let's start with the future. We should be clear that the future is now. We, we all know this lovely movie, Back to the Future, or whatever they're called. And these are all in the present, more or less. So we checked what of, which of these things have happened. And well, the most obvious things are flying cars and in fact this December there was the news item that uh, there was a at least a test permission for one so that is right then 3d movies very iconic and that exists we've sought <laughs> we've chosen two examples here but 3d is not a sh resounding success. There have been uh, problems, but we have hope. It, things are moving forward. It will be great at some point. Uh, you will be able to nerd around in public spaces, and that will seem completely normal. No one will know what you're looking at, if it's going to be Shark, Sonado, 3D, or if you're actually just editing, editing your Perl code. Uh, fusion reactors, well, it's an important topic, and there is actually progress on that. We have this, this year, the first one. Uh, the form factor is a bit, you know, not very good to handle, but okay, we'll, we'll accept that. A bit of a smaller one there. Uh, uh, hoverboards in the movie, and there have been attempts of rebuilding them, which haven't been such a resounding success. And we found a video of one of those attempts to put this into reality. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> so you saw that that was the combination of a drone, 3D, and the other big trend, selfie. <laughs> Selfies, meanwhile, have become a real problem. More and more people uh, during selfie taking have been meeting a strange death. Uh, look at the great transition here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Yellowstone National Park warns against selfies with bison. bison. Russia hasn't found an anti-selfie authority yet, but the Ministry for Public Security, Safety, Safety warns against selfies, in particular with the typically Russian flora and fauna. But it has been a year of, of scientific breakthroughs Also, dementia treatment. We have a, an outstanding example here. This is a member of the House of Lords in the UK. He, after he admitted suffering from dementia and was then incapacitated and had to hand over business to his family, he still went to the House of Lords 634 times and, and did the business. And 
some or other will now ask themselves how he had his dementia acknowledged and the reason was that there have that there were accusations of child uh, abuse which could not be pursued he has seems to have access to a, a advanced uh, med medication is there a certain medication just for voting in parliament well it's not that much that you need to know for that I, I think but it's so hard to find good staff these days and the military have made progress um, camouflage has become so successful that they can't even find the things themselves. Also, with the flight security, um, the German army had the small problem that they would like to fly uh, drones, but flight security had something against that. But they did find a solution. They have technical safety measures to prevent them crashing in residential areas. Uh, probably a renaissance of the Siemens uh, Lufthaken, which is a, uh, a mythical device from the Second World War, I think. So, which brings us to our first standard section, the Walter Ulrich Award for Democratically Legitimated Building Management, uh, which is a bit more serious. Um, we looked at what could happen with uh, things. Uh, we've seen more and more walls come up. In, in very much in the Walter, Walter Ulbricht sense, um, this year's Christmas card uh, with the Israeli wall uh, and the biggest installation of walls that is supposed to keep people from moving somewhere is in fact in Morocco. Hardly anyone knows this. This Moroccan wall is 2,700 kilometers long, several segments, and uh, this has been drilled into the deserts. Uh, if you look at this picture, you may think it should be visible on Google Maps, shouldn't it? Yes. We did look for it, and these structures are so large that you can see them from space. And these are guarded by 1,200 people with 7 million landmines. That's the kind of dimension that this thing has. So if you want to put up a board like that, it stops people for a while, so what you need is men behind it with machine guns or landmines to actually keep people from breaking through. And this trend uh, can be seen throughout the year. Estonia would like to build a fence at the Russian border, which we found a bit strange. It's a response to aggressions uh, by Russia, they said, and I was wondering what happens if the Russian comes and sees that wall. Would, would they then say, okay, Igor, will we We'll spare Estonia for a while, no invasion today, there's a fence there. So, so Bulgaria built this wall at the Turkish border. Kenya, Kenya builds, is building a fence towards Somalia. I have found a dozen examples or so, we haven't got them all in here. But a very relevant part is Saudi Arabia, which has been building a very large wall by the European company EADS uh, against Iraq. And this is mainly consisted, uh, comprised of computer sensors and things like that, and uh, which are uh, enforcing this wall, this structure. And you think, OK, sensors, computers, surely they have certain problems with hackers there. That's what you would think, which leads us to the hacker apocalypse. Let's begin with a look back, 2010, the German interior minister, uh, Thomas de Maizière. Uh, hackers might be able to hack something, but the reliability and security of the new identity card is not in question, he says, which is the, the German new identity card, which has been equipped with a biometric chip. Meanwhile, we have advanced five years, 2015. The approach has changed somewhat. The vocabulary has changed a bit too. It has expanded uh, the importance of the topic of cybersecurity. Well, I think that stands for itself. Cybercrime is defined in a, in a broader sense. In a broader sense, it's always the case if the internet is used as a means for crime, and in a narrower sense, if it's really supposed to 
Cyber, 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 cyber angriff. It's not about the actual quote, actually. It's about the overuse of the cyber word. Cyber, cyber, cyber mobbing. Cyber, 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 cyber crime. Cyber, 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 cyber strategy. Cyber, 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 cyber abwehr. Und hier bleiben wir übrigens. And uh, we're keeping up with that, uh, also with the cyber topic and the dealing of public and private data collection. Uh, cyber is a very large topic. Someone from the army. Uh, we have offensive capabilities in certain areas where we do cyber. Und noch viel wichtiger, cyber, cyber offense and much more importantly, cyber defense are moving to the top of the priority list. Unknown hackers had in in inserted a Trojan, and that is cyber in a narrower sense. Four weeks after a cyber attack on the computer network, uh, it still is not quite clear which data has been fallen into the other hands. That was the German Parliament's uh, network that was being attacked, by the way. In my view, the, uh, the relevant trends are clear and more in the cyber area. Cyber strategy, cyber abwehr, cyber angriff, cyber crime, cyber mobbing, cyberspace und cyber außenpolitik. Sie haben Polizei, wir haben deutsche Cybersicherheit. Okay, we've tried to translate some of these quotes, but I hope you got the musical aspect of it as well. Uh, a warm thank you to Thilo Jung and team who built this video for us exclusively, the Ultras. Thank you. Thilo Jung, a well-known journalist, uh, well, YouTube journalist. Okay, the video will be on YouTube from tonight. Now, let's see what hackers have been hacking. TV. We've seen this. The French station TV 5 Monde. They were completely offline, uh, online and offline, analog and digital. And you ask yourself, how did it come to that? And we had this nice man with his passwords in the background. Uh, so the IS surely needed the best of the best of the best for this. Newspapers were hacked too. Again. Parliament. Well, yeah, the Parliament was hacked in always possible, thinkable uh, emails, computers. Uh, Merkel's computer, too. It wasn't just infected, but there was an official warning of the German Parliament administration that you shouldn't click on faked Merkel emails. I think that, in general, this is a good advice. <laughs> Election computers, of course, too. The whole infrastructure was hacked. Uh, the hack, in this case, wasn't as bad as you might think, uh, because it, the, the password was very easy to guess, A, B, C, D, E, and admin. Uh, we, had a sim we have a simple picture here from a contemporary computer game. Airlines were hacked. Ships were hacked. And who knows from where this is taken? Yeah. Get the answer from the audience. Another example from a ship's damage that can only be explained with hacking, if you ask me. It's completely obvious. It's all hacking. Hotels. Right? In the Hyatt, who has left their credit card data with the Hyatt or knows someone? All cars were hacked. Clear case of Hack the Planet this year. Uh, car registering authorities. But, well, okay, if that's what they think. Fingerprints. 
kennen wir ja nur auch schon. Well, yes, we know about fingerprints by now. Enough. Uh, you don't have to read the small print here. It's all antivirus, snake oil makers, one after the other, have been prized open. Those that haven't been didn't find place on the slide, they're on the next one. Hacking team. Yes, another highlight this year. Hacker, hack, hacking team. Hackers, hack, hacking team. I'm sorry. Um, A very nice highlight was this email as the CEO, hacking team CEO noticed that some evil people from WikiLeaks data could reconstruct where their employees were and he thought that this was an incredible violation of their privacy and another employee then pointed to the fact that the CCC had actually explained all this. Lotteries, that's what I found particularly nice. There was a case, uh, a lottery hack where the security chief of the lottery uh, company in the US had manipulated the lottery system, and that made me think back, did anyone see the uh, current William Gibson? Did anyone read the current William Gibson novel, uh, where some people actually from the future hack the lottery of the present? And the nice thing was that he only got through because there was a security protocol saying that the computer should be wiped after a lottery draw, and that, uh, took away all the traces. Banks, of course, were hacked as well. One billion. There was only one picture that we could think of. And sniper guns, sniper rifles, Linux-based. So if someone puts Linux somewhere on something, you can imagine what happens next. Anesthesia device and other medical technology bits. Uh, that was just a test, but we do have a talk about a pacemaker at this Congress. Uh, I'm sorry, Dave. This is the respiratory functions that were stopped. Um, <laughs> a a, an affair website. The th funny thing, when all this data came out, uh, it turned out that these uh, people were just big, big, they were just paying bots to, uh, creating bots to make people talk to bots and make them pay for talking to bots. Crowdsourcing of a Turing test, really, that's what it is, right? When Ashley Madison was hacked. Another personal highlight this year was the CIA director who was hacked by a teenager. And that was because they, this director had an AOL account. We have some exclusive screenshots of what could be seen with the account of that CIA director. It's a bit old school looking, that terminal, isn't it? And it wasn't just any kind of teenager. This was <laughs> a cannabis user. And when police asked him what he was going to do, he just said, OK, I'll go to Russia and chill with Snowden. Moment, moment. Hang on, wait. This is, this is not so far-fetched, actually. As Edward Snowden suggests, revolution to legalize marijuana, says the headline. The Pentagon has been hacked, uh, a department for human resources management, because th that was kind of strange, because the fingerprints and lie detector tests and dirty secrets of all those employees were on that server, and, and they apparently have been taken out as well. And uh, the question then is, who is to blame? Well, the marijuana, marijuana users, of course, uh, which leads us to the high points of journalism. 
the news item that it's Snowden's fault and agents have to be withdrawn as a result came from the Sunday Times, and previously reputable newspaper now part of the Murdoch Empire. And the journalist that wrote this was then asked, we just publish uh, what we believe to be the position of the British government at the moment. Journalist. Yeah. Journalist. No spokesperson. And this is exactly what this is about. This, this message that the Snowden documents had such a debilitating effect on secret services. Corbyn wants to end uh, austerity, nationalised railways, uh, not just for conservatives, he is known as a lefty loony, vegetarian, cyclist, not just seen by conservatives as a lefty loony. This was a great effort by German public broadcaster ZDF about, uh, about potential heads of government of another country. So I'm very much looking forward to Corbyn actually winning in the UK if the that same station will then have to run an interview with him. Yes, journalism has gone through some, some highs when people were just talking and losing. Uh, David Cameron tweeted when Corbyn won leadership of the Labour Party and Cameron saw him as a competition and, and then reacted by this tweet saying that he the whole party is now a threat to national security and the Russian embassy in the UK reacted in a responsible way. Just imagine UK media headlines if Russian president called the leading opposition party a threat to national security. Yeah, Cameron. Yeah, Cameron. Pictured with a pig. We know what this is about. Cameron had a small PR problem uh, with genitalia and pig's heads that in his youth apparently he uh, had uh, brought into uh, some kind of combination that wasn't completely obvious to everyone. So social media had a huge party uh, of interesting utterances and some older media reports had to be re-evaluated in light of these new reports. This one, for example. So there seems to be a certain personal fetish that Cameron may have. Um, then uh, the German government, uh, there were some, some highlights, typical pattern here, uh, which I want to illustrate with just some example. The headline says that the state government withdraws the um, secret agents within uh, organizations that they monitor. Well, the article says, apart from those that we still need. And uh, this one says, unfavorable light lighting. Uh, we always see that representatives, high representatives, uh, by themselves uh, enter unfavorable lighting situations. The defense minister here. <laughs> so, this for once is a case where the journalists, it's not the journalists' fault, they just kept on holding the cameras. And that's what it's about sometimes, just be there at the right place at the right time. Uh, here's a picture of the Bavarian Premier, the state, uh, Premier of the state of Bavaria, and uh, some announcement of a program which is called Hitler's Deputy, not about him, of course, or is it? Um, sometimes this one says refugee, refugee crisis is delegated to the top level, and this one says gas uh, should be running soon. But there is hope. There is control is going to be re-established uh, over the media, and Apple will put it right. They are capable of saying this story will only appear in a few days for most users, only on Apple News. This will lead to some interesting business models with politics. And then there is this, well, sometimes even the question with the survey tells you what you're supposed to say. This is, was about the Ukrainian conflict. Is it solvable or not? 
yes, Merkel and Hollande will get it right. No, Ukraine and Russia are too stupid. Or C, well, I can't really say. And, well, that covers all, doesn't it? The government principally is not leading an information war. The government informs, says the press speaker for the German government, just to make things clear. That's now you know. And then we have combinations where the German tabloid built a uh, I'm not so sure. Are you just having fun, or is it something that slips through the index finger as a terror symbol? And then you have Merkel pointing with an index finger. I think that these are the evil hackers, if we just ask the right questions. Yes, Ryanair had a nice moment this year when the story went round. They, they would be... Uh, flying refugees without visa for humanitarian, humanitarian reasons. There were congratulations all around until it was uh, the German press agency says, oops, we've been faked, we, we've been believing a fake. And here another highlight of journalism. In the middle of the Secret Services scandal, uh, this, this is how the NSA helped the FIFA investigations. That's what the NSA is for, right? They are the good ones. They are getting football clean again. What can you have against that, possibly? Which gets it to Realpolitik. This co collection of war criminals is so nice. I really like it. Who is pictured there? United States. Joschka Fischer, former foreign minister in the Red-Green Coalition between 2002 and 2005, 1998 and 2005, his police file was found, a uh, very innovative way of leaking in a suitcase on the conveyor belt at Frankfurt Airport. Someone simply put it there and, uh, well. <laughs> and files just put them somewhere where they can be found. That seems to be a transport these days. Uh, the NSU process, the National Socialist Underground, a right-wing terror organization that committed multiple murders. Files from, from that court case were found on a pavement somewhere. And we know how it is. NSU terror is difficult, so they've sent it experts to find what really is inside. Uh, Bavaria's forestry minister causes a forest fire. Realpolitik. Hang on, hang on. Always a question about personnel, what staff can do. Uh, he thought he didn't, he didn't notice that he'd lit a fire in, in, in a forest and 22 firemen were required. Surely you think this is going to be expensive, but he actually had to pay a 35 euro fine, not because he was careless, but because he was burning his garden waste on a public holiday. Sometimes they don't know what's really happening on the international floor. And especially Juncker had some, has some really interesting moments, some really funny moments. There are some symbols that are universally known and for these acts. I don't know how they get these ideas. So when they had to kiss Honecker, I thought, why? They like that. Everybody is fetish. All right, another interesting thing are these images of politicians about the Krim crisis. So we have the president on the right and the president of Russia on the right. They look not that calm. Are they afraid that maybe they kill him from behind? So what was they couldn't say towards the exit? This is the uh, image from when they came out, which apparently makes it quite clear. Another image, Putin had uh, quite few problems this year. He doesn't like monarchy this 
apparently, and sometimes when he's abroad, it's quite hard. At home, people try to uh, wanted to um, bring Lenin alive again. That was quite easy, earlier. You know? I mean, the communist leader to revive him with holy water. Yeah, great idea. It's apparently good, uh, an improved belief in zombies. You know the Russian national hymn? Just a reference class with about pathos and especially the national song is played in sports event and when someone arrives and sometimes the local uh, group is not perfectly well taught and look at Putin's face. Yeah. I do believe that I would feel slightly uncomfortable as the leader of this Egyptian military chapel. So, well, with a dialogue of nations, you will have to get through that. So now we get to the next subject, symbolic image. Um, international terrorism. So you probably have seen these. They were quite funny. These are uh, uh, parts that you smoke for terror camps if you smoke illegally imported cigarettes, especially this image before the Taliban co opened the jihad against each other. Then this new uh, uh, recruitment strategy, they get bad with internet memes they recruit. And if that doesn't help, they use image of cats and Nutella. Quality TV. CNN. Another, and then now we go into the infrastructure apocalypse. And it's a great uh, an area this year, so we'll just scroll through it. It began with a collapse that get around when Merkel collapsed, and then it, they said it wasn't Merkel, it was the chair that collapsed, which was a great comment somewhere, and said that would have to be in an SPD chair, it's a, one of the German parties who, um, yeah, have changed their opinion after the election. But we probably all know what it, who was the culprit. Yeah, we have another few images from the constructing new buildings, especially schools and sport halls. And down here we say, what else are we supposed to do? Die here? It says, don't enter the emergency balconies, even in a case of an emergency. And these images are really surprising if you look at it, how bad it is in German schools. Yeah. Why is that? Well, the cause is clearly found. It's probably because they built a new airport in Berlin because quality is overly um, is more important than its actually meant. They noticed that it the person, depending on the Berlin airport, which is late a couple of years, wasn't an, a real building man, uh, designer. And those who did the fire protection apparently weren't real fire protection engineers. And this year, 
uh, we noticed that the wall, fire protection walls weren't fire protection walls. <laughs> Apparently, it's a carnival there. And in Great Britain, we went in new ways, especially in airport security, because their system crashed from time to time, and we work on it and improving it, and we they enter internet to it. Not now, but in the following five years, we enter internet-based systems, because what can possibly go wrong? And they are much more secure and much more reliable than what we have nowadays, and I'm quite afraid of that. In Belgium, the power breaks down for the air space surveillance, and we'll have more information about them. But as a country, well, they have had some problems with air security. Paris had to be turned down, and there's an interesting information about that. Uh, they had a Windows 3.1 system bug and they had to shut down the Paris airport. And you feel much more secure using that. If you fly with Windows 3.0. From time to time, they also lose the Airbus, <laughs> some small part that land on the golf course and it just falls down. Also, the infrastructure apocalypse arrived in the Tagesschau and also the international media slowly starts to talk about it. And if you look into the future, Philips, the things that are don't break by themselves will break them for you. And that's sometimes with firmware updates. They have these hue lamp collect and suddenly only Philips uh, lamps worked with it and other standard lamps didn't work anymore. Firmware updates are something you have to look at more carefully. On the left, there's a car that says, hey, move to the right after you update the firmware. On the right top, we see a clock that doesn't work because the firmware has been updated and it doesn't show the time in that time during that. Not only clocks, but also the police. They also tried to optimize something and following that, they wanted to reduce power. It was a huge success, but afterwards, the um, the the lights and the alarms of the police cars didn't work anymore, and, uh, nor did the radio. And that saved a lot of power. Another infrastructure apocalypse part is you can also look at bigger things. The Chinese do everything bigger, for example, their catast catastrophes as well. We still don't know what the reason for that. Apparently, some papers were written the wrong way, but it's surprisingly how much went wrong and how much is broken afterwards. That's the aftermath, the crater that is left. Okay, let's get to the uh, German railway. To the Bahn. Yes, the German railway has well, is well known and well liked here. And this year there were again some problems, especially this. They always have a problem with heat. In the warm in summer, it's warm in Germany. In the winter, it might get a bit cold. But I don't think with the barn they always pray that it doesn't slow, uh, that it doesn't freeze. Back then there was a joke. The railway system has just th four enemies: the rail, the summer, the spring, the autumn, and the winter. <laughs> have we looked at these images? No, we haven't put it. There was this great case where the toilets were broken, and they had to had an announcement at the railway: "We stop a little bit longer here. Our toilets are broken. Please use the toilets on the." Uh, the train the pla on the other side of the platform. But unfortunately, there is no images and no press information about that. Another uh, so, uh, spontaneous building uh, actions are also available at the Deutsche Bahn, this time in Hamburg, where someone built a wall in a train door. And you have to help there. If there's a hole, look at the great work. It wasn't. Um, because it was so good, it probably wasn't from the uh, railway company. So maybe you say, hey, let's 
go by bus or other tools and something like this happens. Railroads that stop because it's so hot or uh, motorways that break open like this. And if you have portals, you always think there has to be new information, a new idea. It has to be better than just opening and putting new asphalt on it. And if you just do that, they are open again in the next year. So you have to find something an innovation, you have to think outside of the box to fix it, and apparently they went ahead with that in the US. They pray about removing his, um, portals, so if Moses managed to divide the sea, so we will get some holes prayed close. Yeah, not just transportation, but also TV stations um, had some problems. Arte and NTV um, this year, and in ways that cannot be blamed on hackers. Uh, in Berlin, ATMs uh, ran out of money because of a dispute. Uh, speaking of which, um, uh, Banks were also affected, and now we're going to talk about news uh, from the economic sector. Um, we have a special for you today. You know, there's always like a you know a special guest country in the Olympics, and this year Saudi Arabia bought some things. Um, they bought some terrorists. They bought some military items, uh, not guns, but um, clothes like night vision goggles and uh, training software, because they use all the old uh, items in Yemen. Also, um, tanks. Germany is very special when it comes to exporting military goods. Um, Saudi Arabia wasn't able to buy those uh, because uh, the tanks that Germany sold are not allowed to be used militarily. And I think that's the same uh, principle that applies to the NSA. They uh, gave us their confirmation in writing, and so we're just going to trust them. Um, Boats in Saudi Arabia, wait, anyways, they just wanted to have their share of the cake. They also bought some uh, Trojan software, and the French built some uh, ships for Egypt. They also bought some mosques. And they even bought a membership in the uh, United Nations uh, Human Rights Council. Uh, $100,000, not that much when you think of it, right? And this money went to the Brits, so, you know, they're fairly broke as well. Uh, and they've got humor as well. Um, Qatar, China, and Saudi Arabia um, called for free and fair elections in Syria. Two tons of speed, well, you know, it's a little too much to use by yourself, but still. Yeah, sort of relatable, right? And some warships uh, from the US, and even some chats from Great Britain. The interesting thing about this is that it always says you know, this is the biggest military deal in uh, enter name of country here. Uh, Canada as well. Um, no one's ever bought this many weapons before. <laughs> and even more weapons. And we see a picture of the Death Star from Star Wars. And uh, also very astonished, um, there's the so-called Coalition of the Willing, but they didn't know about that they were part of the Coalition of the Willing, 
and actually um, heard of that news from uh, the media. Wait, we're part of what? So, with a country like this, it's like a Euro um, bank account. And at the end of the year, they have like uh, 90 billion uh, in losses. But as we learned, uh, losses are not that huge of a problem. Um, with the Greek crisis, that worked as well. And now uh, we've got um, the economy uh, on an upscale development. Um, things are moving forward. Small uh, comma error, you know, that happens. So let's look at some uh, job offerings. Serious appliance, please click on this link. And then there's like lots and lots of lines with a very con obfuscated link. And you know, uh, Jobs are offered to even more and more parts of the uh, uh, people. And even in uh, nuclear science, there's still some very interesting jobs left. And now we're going to talk about the Anatoly Bogorsky um, Prize for Applied uh, nucle Nuclear Safety. And Anatoly Bogorsky, of course, was the only person to be able to uh, survive the radiation. Uh, within a reactor. And we're going to start in Switzerland, the um, nuclear power plant Mühleberg. They had some problems with um, fire extinguishers. Um, but uh, they said, you know, the, the small um, leaks in the halls that they had, they weren't bigger than 32 centimeters, and that shouldn't be too uh, much of a problem. And so the, um, the operators then opted for remote maintenance. This is, by the way, in Bern, close to, uh, near Bern, where I work. <laughs> um, so it seems like uh, the 10 kilometers for each centimeter of a uh, fissure in, in the in the core mantle it seems so um, Belgium has had their problems with fissures in the core mantle it turned out that there were many more than had been known 10,000 were known which I found unsettling now it seems it's more than 16,000 but they are very small micro fissures so not that bad that's the way they, they look and up there you see centimeters, not millimeters. <laughs> Even in Germany, there were small irregularities with... Uh, uh, here is a, a bird defecating, which uh, led to a nuclear power session having to be repaired. Uh, another, where uh, the um, nuclear fuel rods were breaking apart. Uh, someone says, we haven't had this before. So there was a series of bad luck. Uh, 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 and uh, yeah, and the winner of this award clearly, they are not German, but the Japanese Nuclear Safety Authority, because eighty percent of their over three thousand uh, measuring devices uh, were giving low values, uh, half to two thirds of the true value. You ask yourself, well, how does that come? Of course, a station like that has to be independent of the power supply, and so you have to give them accumulators, batteries. So how do you do that? Lead, of course, is a popular material for that. How do you fix those? Well, around the device, and there you have it. So this is what they very beautifully called a construction flaw. Um, yeah, oops. So, around the sensor, the lead was around the sensor, that was lead batteries, yeah. Uh, another very well-known category, not too many examples this year, uh, it says, well, the sensor, sensors must have been having a P. So, 
just to compare with a, uh, an example from the past, Axel Springer, publisher of many papers, including Bild, my world is divided into stupidity, prejudice, and fear, but the best device against those is my Bilt newspaper. Now, the same company says core business is uh, selling advertisements, journalists, content is just a vehicle to lead the public's attention towards the ad advertising content. This was a quote in a court case where the Bilt paper tried to outlaw or go against ad blockers. Now, here's a piece from uh, this was twittered by themselves uh, so you have this uh, you have this screenshot and where's the advertisements here seems like they're using ad blockers themselves ad blockers are evil if you use them but if we do it's completely different Yes, another one from the category says, uh, that says the censor must have been having a pee. Um, the conspiracy theorists, must, theorists must, have, must have been right. It's all about oil in the war. Um, if there is war, the country always seems to have large oil reserves. Uh, there are people that want to go there and, and, and get at the oil. And using the word intervener instead of aggressor is very nice, which leads us to the Richard Nicholson Lame Excuse Award, which is also about oil. Uh, the deputy director saying that we didn't attack ISIS because of the environment. The pictures are from a doc documentary about burning oil fields in Iraq uh, at a time when they saw these things rather differently. But we could have interpreted it as a learning. A lesson learned. Uh, this picture, you see, the uh, this white thing, this dome where they had their monitoring devices on the UK embassy, and I have a few photos. I took some myself, and they were asked. The British embassy was asked by the German government. What are these things, these, this white thing on your roof there? What, what are you doing up there? And the Brits apparently said this was for artistic reasons placed on the roof. The NSA committee of the Bundestag, the chancellor's office opposite the Bundestag is shown and the committee was asking about uh, the exterior Secret Service informing the Chancery about issues and uh, a former member of the Chancery saying that some letters hadn't reached him. So only one conclusion, the dog has eaten the post. And then we had a basketball second league club that said that uh, their relegation from the second league was due to a Windows error because they had to react to something within 10 seconds and their Windows server had frozen or Windows machine had frozen because they had, be, had been doing updates. And then there was, uh, it turned out that there is a large number of, of torture photos in some uh, safes in, in the US from Iraq and Pakistan, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And some judge wanted to have a look at those. Someone actually uh, had, a, had a request to look at those and went to the courts to get them. And the U.S. said that the threat by publishing those pictures uh, to national security uh, was uh, quite clear because they could then be used to uh, hire more terrorists or convince more people to become more terrorists. Um, and then there was an Argentine prosecutor who was killed, murdered, and well, why was he killed? Surely didn't have had nothing to do with the fact that the Argentine president was going to be arrested by him. He was going to arrest the Argentine president, uh, who had a few things to hide, apparently. And she then had the defense that this murder was clearly, <laughs> clearly managed by the opposition to make her appear like if she was killing people. Yeah. Yeah. So we do know by now, uh, Mr. Bekadal was talking about his case of being investigated for treason. 
So he has to be investigated. But what if Mr. Marston, the head of the Interior Secret Service who started this, uh, if he leaks things from his own authority to the press? And the answer then was, no, that wasn't treason. It was just a misunderstanding which they had to counter. And they had just reacted to a report in the magazine Spiegel, a completely different thing, as you can clearly see. <laughs> now, accusations of the U.S. Senate against IP, J.P. Morgan, uh, 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 some some billion dollar scandal, the banks had uh, been defrauding something, and management then report they have always been acting in good faith, um, and this term seemed quite well known to me. The government, says the speaker, is always informs the government in good faith and best faith and best conscience. This is now repeated by many spokespeople for the government and individual ministries. In principle, due to their best knowledge and conscience. Well, he got the meme late, clearly. We are keeping to international standards, obviously. Okay, now, a new feature of this show. We thought we have to become a bit more interactive to prevent the audience from falling asleep. So, now we are playing Terra Bingo. Here is a URL. Open your end devices. If you still have some power in your batteries, these this is the URL as a QR code. <laughs> you can actually enter it by hand too. So Okay. Turn up the volume. Are we ready? <laughs> oh. It's all going to be deducted from your time. So, you will be accusing us of overrunning Windows Update. Yes, of course. Is it working? Okay, it is. Hey, go on. Okay, if it won't work, it's your fault. It's scrolling for us. Okay, the URL isn't that hard to remember. We'll start. If it won't work for you, it won't work. It's a gimmick. So, the rules are simple. You see these terms in the bingo, and as soon as you see them, you click on them, and those that have a bingo at first will be told by your phone. Okay, we'll start. The motto is, just like every year, uh, all those terror reports uh, have certain repetitive features that uh, reminds, of us, reminds us of Groundhog Day. So we'll start in Paris in January, the Charlie Hebdo attack. It turned out that the attacker had been under surveillance for a long time. So if one of you has the bingo now, you're cheating. Um, then the CSU, the Bavarian wing of the German Conservatives, are calling for deportation. In 2012, to compare, CSU, same party, uh, wasn't always keeping on that line uh, when it was about caricatures the last year. In 2012, they said, uh, this was blasphemy, you should, uh, you should actually go against it. That's what they said in 2012, but in 2015, um, had nothing against Mohammed caricatures. Now, a very nice uh, divide between two paragraphs in the same text. Our chancellor told us every, uh, every any kind of uh, suspicion, general suspicion, is not allowed. Most Muslims in Germany are righteous people, true to the constitution. And then, as a consequence, she uh, argued for a return to data retention. So, no general suspicion, right? Another one, forgetting your ID at the scene of the crime. Does anyone have a bingo yet? No. Good. 
Uh, the suspects are all dead. Unfortunately, cannot be inquired. Very, very popular. And this is a very nice PR opportunity, of course, if there is a catastrophe and everyone is focusing on it. Many people have been using that this year to say, well, we have always been in favor of free speech and against censorship and terrorism is evil. Mr. Zuckerberg from Facebook, for example. And two weeks later, he censored Ahmed. So you have to have a certain sense of timing for timing. Now, another great PR opportunity in the press, uh, widely reported, but we have to bring it again, the heads of government that were lining up uh, as a fake kind of demo. Another call for data retention at the European level. Still no bingo. What's going on? Someone has a bingo. After the bingo is before the bingo. We'll start from the beginning. After the attack is before the attack. So the bingo will continue. Mr. Oettinger calling for data retention. We included him particularly because for a long time we didn't know whether he actually knew what the internet is. But now he is in. It's all good. He's online every day, he says, right? So this is a positive. Uh, apart from the terrorists, of course. Okay, next, Copenhagen in February. Again, it was about Mohammed's caricatures. The culprits, again, were known to police, or the suspects. And uh, weapons from state um, supplies, uh, so state involvement again. Uh, again, suspects all dead. Um, and we can't question them, any, question them anymore. The, the way the crime took place was very believable. The taxi driver was found at Kelvin. Um, they, could, they were able to ask a taxi driver for an address where, they, where he dropped off one of the suspects. Uh, these technologies aren't quite mature yet, are they? Um, Another call for data retention. We haven't had that for a long time. March, Moscow. It was Moscow's turn. And if you thought, oh, the terror narrative is now starting in Russia, no. Oops, sorry. That wasn't a terror attack because there was no uh, victim in the West. So, Ober Ursel near Frankfurt, where. Uh, a classic beginner's error took place. An attack was able to be prevented at the last moment. The suspect uh, had known contacts into terrorism, Al-Qaeda in Maghreb, for example, and he was in constant exchange with members of the Islamist Jihad Union. Again, the deduction was very believable. A, a salesperson in a home depot uh, saw them buy stuff. And if you now think, now now we have the calls for more security, well, no, the Bavarian conservatives are not calling for data retention. They didn't have to. This was now a done deal from the politician's point of view, at least. Um, not all of them got the memo. Uh, some newspaper record did call for data retention. But Axel Springer can always be relied upon. Uh, and then the Social Democrats, uh, often the opposition, but now in government with the Conservatives. Third paragraph is nice. If we had known, if we had had this at the time of the first NSU right-wing terrorist murders, we could have prevented further, more, more of them, he said. Now data retention is a done deal, and now we have shift focus, and it's all about Syria. The Frankfurt State Prosecutor has, uh, is investigating Islamists. We need a new kind of security. We need capable secret services. We need more. And further down, there was killer games. Yay. 
So the impressive thing is it's not Counter-Strike this time, but Splinter Cell, what they call it, and you don't play a terrorist, but an American that kills terrorists in this game. That didn't quite fit the narrative. Okay, but that's details. And now we have the beginner's error. They didn't shoot the terrorists. And then things, unpleasant, unpleasant things like investigations take place, and they get to the court, and the prosecution then cannot prove at all that it was an attempted terror attack. Maybe they were just doing, dealing with some mold or something. So uh, for lack of evidence, the court case was crushed. So you may think, OK, if terrorists come from abroad now, why don't we shut down the borders? And the first example in that context that I found was smugglers, uh, arrests of would-be smugglers, taxi drivers that took people to Bavaria. We have them pictured up here at, uh, from Salzburg in Austria. And uh, we have other smugglers' vehicles here, uh, very easy to mistake, to, to get wrong. And then we put this in for the last sentence. I'll read it. The terror planner, um, due to what we see, what we know by now, shot himself in the foot and had to be uh, cared for by an emergency doctor. So great if terrorists can do can do no better than the Secret Service. OK, here is one that we only included for the next slide in Tunis, in, uh, because it turned out they had been under observation for a long time. And now, in June, in France, we have a different kind of terror attack in France, which was just about one death who was decapitated. Um, so, of course, the culprits had been known for their Islamic radicalization, Salafists, Bingo, who had been on the terror list since 2006 and had been taken off it. And more calls for more security. So a great occasion to call for more security, but that's not what happened. Why not now? Because the French had yanked security up to the max. They had passed a law giving police all kinds of powers and secret services. The drawer was just empty. There was nothing left to suggest. But in Turkey, there was still some, some headway, some, some, some leeway. Again, links to known uh, attackers supplied by the secret services, uh, all suspects dead, ID left at the scene of the crime. These IDs are quite solid. They can survive a lot. So maybe uh, you should provide make bulletproof vests out of those IDs, maybe. Interesting is the way that it wasn't an unbelievable deduction. There was none at all. They just said, these are the culprits. We've arrested them, or they, they're dead. And uh, of course, security measures were raised. So just like every year, we haven't we haven't finished yet the latest attack in Paris in November. And the quote up there was from a, a family member of, of one of the um, culprits or suspects. So this man was in all terror databases, but he was free to travel as in a club med. So where does someone like that learn to use a gun? And it turns out he did learn it in the Police uh, Weapons Association. Again, all suspects are dead, unfortunately. They cannot be questioned. The new model of the anti-terror police in Europe. Again, ID found <laughs> and calls for more surveillance, data retention, always easy. Uh, the police haven't received the memo yet. That's been passed. The German interior minister says a part of the answers would unsettle the population. He was asked about some, some details for about some suspects that had been found in Germany. And he said, this, the answer would partially unsettle the 
so I won't give the answer. Uh, so this was such a big attack uh, that you can dig deeper into the drawer and, and, and find what you always wanted to allow or forbid, and the US services were very clear. Surely those evil terrorists are all using encryption. Surely it was encrypted. So crypto prevents criminal investigations. We have to have an insight. So. And then, of course, it's Snowden's fault. Bingo. It's privacy's fault. Privacy is impossible. It's, it's always at fault, clearly. Particularly privacy advocates, those that call for privacy. Unfortunately, it didn't go that well with the narrative this time, because the nerds had enough time to do some fact-checking. And it turned out that it wasn't refugees. They did all have EU passports. And one of them were actually still alive, but one of, an alleged uh, hacker. She wasn't one. And the encryption thing was uh, a complete fake as well. So France has had data retention for years, but it didn't help. So who of you has a bingo? Raise your hands. Woo! And you can keep on playing with the next attack. You know how things go. Just run the app. Uh, please link it in your blog. Yeah, I'll put it there. No problem. So there we get to the last part, the Balls of Steel Award. So this year we had a lot of options this year, of candidates this year. It's so good that we would have to put down the Putin information, so we had to take it in advance. So the person, yeah, well, he had Balls of Steel, the one who laid all the, the treble. So we thought about putting it in twice, but <laughs> maybe just you don't have to listen to it twice. So there was this gentleman who, in a, a conference, was on the other end of the fence, and he he burned or he burned the, um, the Confederate flag or the flag of the southern nations of the United States, the southern states of the United States. Um, again. Leader of the right-wing movement in Germany on a march. Now look at the two guys on the left. And oh, these two have so much deserved this applause. I watched this movie video. I wish they were on stage now. Little applause. We don't have enough time to do, redo it. Unfortunately, the two guys no, need your help. They have been p given uh, they financial convicted. Uh, convicted with financial. If so, if you have some money left over, but I think that's worth it. Here it says Nazis and the uh, yeah. activation of the. So if someone has smuggled this Nazis poster into a rally by that same right wing, well, the party that's linked to the movement. The party. Another part of this is that there is a small sign down below here that has been folded down. So I like it that people think. This artist in an FSB main quarter in Moscow and I took some photos, I don't know what FSB stands for. We know that he has a fair uh, case in the good ju 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 judicial fair system. Trial. 
and he had a fair trial. And another group who had run a Gulag museum in uh, uh, Russia, and it's an even more, and he had to close it because it just didn't work anymore. Then there was some activists who, in Sweden, worked at a security conference, and they entered some Wi-Fi access point and sniffed the traffic. And who does isn't happy about open Wi-Fi? And yeah, some interesting data. <laughs> Photo. <laughs> Again, there are no words from the stage. You remember the guy from the physics class? It didn't work with these papers, and you wanted to make static. And now we know it works perfectly. It's a great idea. <laughs> then there was this case. Uh, if you imagine this uh, this way, the w uh, man was caught and he was put in the back, and his wife arrives, and he she doesn't just size, steals the car with the man, but it returns it inclusive of the handcuffs. And cleaning the handcuffs. So she stole the police car. And then the winner was this guy who was in Aleppo, and she take, took up a Jesvi Shali, and she is the winner of our, the Balls of Steel Award of this year. So, thank you very much for listening, for your attention, and... Thank you so much for listening to our translation. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, please let us know if you enjoyed it, or if you didn't, and would like some improvements. We have a hashtag that is not getting used this much this year, so give us something on C3T on Twitter. Uh, use our tweet at us. We have an account called C3Lingo.